use the chi-squared table to find the following critical values. So we have one, two, three, four parts, and we're going to work out each of these using our table. The chi-squared table looks like this. We'll be discussing this table and showing how it's used in just a moment when we solve these four pieces, A, B, C, D. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to copy down these four statements on a sheet of paper, and then we'll go use the table to find the values. Okay, so let's take a closer look at our table, our chi-squared critical value table here. All right, so if you look at the way the table is situated, we have a right tail shaded in the drawing here, and we have notation of alpha in the tail, and then you see a symbol here, chi-squared alpha at the bottom. What they're trying to tell us here is that that little subscript is the amount of area in the right side of the table beyond that chi-squared value on the number line below. So in other words, if there's alpha there as a subscript, there's alpha area in the tail above. So look at this first column here. It tells us that we're dealing with chi-squared 0.995. That means 99.5% of the area is to the right of that chi-squared value. That must mean that this chi-squared value is on the left-hand side of the curve because 99.5% of all the area is to the right of that. Then we have a value next to it. This is chi-squared 99. This is chi-squared 97.5. This is chi-squared 95 and chi-squared 90. So these are essentially like the left side of the chi-squared curve or the chi-squared number line. What we want to do for the most part in our course is really look at um, right-sided chi-squared values. So we're looking for usually a right-tailed test to have the critical value for that test. And so we usually want to use the second page of this table, which is here. Okay, so the second page of the table shows the chi-squared values that you would normally find for a right-tailed procedure. So you know, we have the degrees of freedom here on the left, and then we have chi-squared 10%, chi-squared 5%, chi-squared 2.5%, chi-squared 1%, and chi-squared 1 half of 1%. So those are the classic alpha values that we can use using this table. All right, so basically what we want to do now is to work out those four critical values that they asked us to find in the question, right? So I've rewritten them here so we can use this paper to describe them. So we have here that um, the first one we want to find is chi-squared 0.05 with 15 degrees of freedom. That's chi-squared 0.05, 15 degrees of freedom. So let's go find the 0.05 column of our chi-squared table. Let's see if we can find that first. So we look here in that first row there, and we see that the second column is the 0.05 column, right? 0.05 column is right there. Let's scroll down until we get to 15 degrees of freedom now, 15 degrees of freedom. So I see there that 15 degrees of freedom in this 0.05 column shows us the value 24.9958, 24.9958. Okay, so let's fill that in for our first answer. It's 24.9958. Okay, so we have our first solution to the problem. All right, let's go on then to do the next one. The next one here is chi-squared 0 0.005 with 40 degrees of freedom. So chi squared 0 0.005 with 40 degrees of freedom. So let's find the 0 0.005 column first. Okay, so in that top row, we see that the 0 0.005 column is the one all the way to the far right hand side, right, of the table. And we need to go down to 40 degrees of freedom. So let's scroll all the way down until we get down to 40 degrees of freedom. Okay, so you're going to see that we're off the screen now, so I'm going to have to move the table up just a little bit so we can see the 40 degrees of freedom row. So let's do that and see what we see here. Okay, so there it is. At the very bottom of our screen, we see the 40 degrees of freedom. And we see that the value in that case is 66.7659. 66.7659. Okay, so let's fill that one in now on our paper. So we find that the answer is Again, 66.7659. All right, so that's our second problem solved. Let's go for part C now. In part C, we're looking at chi-squared 10%, so alpha is 10%, and 22 degrees of freedom. So let's go find on our table the 10% uh, row here, in the top row, I should say, find 10% alpha. So. There it is, it's actually our very first position, right? Our very first value on the table. So 0 0.10, and let's go down to 22 degrees of freedom now and see where that gives us. So moving down to 22 degrees of freedom. 
is it just there at the very bottom part of our screen there. So I have to move this up just a little bit so we can see it. We have the answer 30.8133. 30.8133. Okay, so let's write that down. That's our answer for part C. So chi squared 10%, 22 degrees of freedom turns out to be 30.8133. Okay, now let's do our very last piece of the of the problem here, the very last part of it, which is part D. We're asked to find chi squared 0 0.025 with 50 degrees of freedom. So that's two and a half percent in the right tail with 50 degrees of freedom. Let's go see if we can find that on our table. Let's first find the 0 0.025 column. So looking at our top of our table, we see that 0 0.025 is actually the middle column, right? 0 0.025 is the middle column. Let's scroll all the way down until we get to 50 degrees of freedom now. Well, you see 50 degrees of freedom, of course, is off the uh, screen, so we're going to move this up just a little bit to find 50 degrees of freedom there. For the middle column, we see that the answer is 71.4202. 71.4202. Okay, so that's our last and final answer for this problem, finding chi-squared critical values using the chi-squared table. So our last uh, answer for this, part D, is 71. Point four two zero two. All right, and that's it.